Happy April 20th, everybody. The spiritual successor of St. Paddy's Day, with an equal amount of emphasis on the colour green and intoxication. You know, a lot of people's idea of cannabis use and its cultural importance comes from the 1960s. And our modern conception of the drug as a stick-it-to-the-man kind of thing, championed by people who look like me, sort of is. But to the ancient people, the plant itself had a variety of uses. Hemp itself was, and still is, great for making clothes, rope, and other things. And the drug itself was used recreationally and in ritual in ancient China, India, and Rome. But today we're going to focus on some ancient stoners from the middle bit of Eurasia. The Great Steppe, a big sea of grass that goes from Korea all the way to Hungary. For most of human history, this great expanse of basically just grass was home to a variety of nomadic peoples. Being nomadic, in other words, people who can't sit still, they were usually moving round, often on the backs of horses. So people are always moving round and round the Great Steppe and back and forth across it, but as a general rule it gets colder and drier the further east you go. So it has a bit of a habit of depositing more people on the west side. And around the 8th century BCE, one of these nomadic tribes, an Iranian people called the Scythians, ended up on the Pontic Steppe, which is modern-day Ukraine kind of area. And they were a wacky and wild bunch. Great horsemen, excellent archers. Think Huns and Mongols and you get the vibe. And, as historians, one of our sources for what these people were like and what they got up to is the Greek historian Herodotus, who probably met quite a few Scythians in his time, but uh, how much he actually knew about them and their culture is a little bit... Uh, you know. But he did at least have the common courtesy to write something down, which is something the Scythians themselves never bothered to do. So we kind of have to rely on him, as well as things that we can dig out of the ground, which we'll come back to later. And Herodotus paints a fairly fearsome picture of the Scythians. He describes them as the only people on earth that are invincible, because they have nothing to fight for. They've got no towns, they've got no crops to fear losing, they've got no shrines to be pillaged. They just move round all the time on the backs of their horses, taking their livestock with them, shooting arrows as they go. A great example of this invincibility happens when Darius the Great of Persia crosses to Europe in the hopes of invading and subduing the Scythian territory. But the Persian king has no luck, because he can't for the life of him get the Scythians to stay still and fight him in a pitched battle. So, he sends a letter to their king, saying, Why do you always run when you can do otherwise? If you believe yourself strong enough, stand and fight, and stop running. But if you know you are weaker, then come to terms with your master, bringing gifts of earth and water. And the Scythian king responds, saying, I'm not going to fight you, and I'll tell you why. If we had towns, we might worry about them being captured. And if we had farmland, we might worry it will be laid waste. But we don't have either. If you feel you must get to fighting soon, then we do have ancestral burial grounds. Find and try to ruin them, and then you'll see whether or not we will fight." Which is pretty fucking metal. So these ancestral burial grounds then, these things that are so important to the Scythians that it is basically the only thing that they will stand and fight for, what were they? Big mounds called Kurgans. If you were an important Scythian, there's a fairly good chance you'd end up being laid to rest in one of these puppies. And when a king dies, they would cut open his stomach, fill it full of incense, celery seeds, anise seeds, and chopped galingale, and then sew him back up again. The king's now very spicy body is then driven round in a cart to all of the Scythian tribes, so that everyone can come out and get one last good look at their leader before they put him underground. Which isn't a bad idea. I reckon we should probably start doing that with our queen, just when she dies we should just mummify her, then let everyone take a good look. You know, make a tourist attraction out of it even, we could do what the Russians did to Lenin and just keep a yellow, weird looking corpse on display, charge people a fortune to come and get a look. Probably use the money to pay her son's legal fees. Anyway, eventually the king's body makes it to the land of the Geryans. Geryans. Whatever. Herodotus says these are the most remote of the Scythian tribes. These guys then compete to see who can build the biggest mound. And when the mound is complete, they take the dead king and all of his riches and possessions, and they put him in it. And they wait. And they keep waiting. And they wait until a full year has passed. Then they slaughter 50 dudes and 50 horses, gut them, 
fill them full of chaff, stick poles through them so that they can, you know, stand upright, and then erect them in a kind of weird White Walker-esque macabre display to make it seem like these guys are perpetually riding in a circle around the dead king. So yeah, wild. Herodotus's account is backed up by archaeology from the region. A fair few of these Kurgans have been found and excavated, and all kinds of sick treasures have been found within. Little tidbits from the lives of these nomadic people. We've got combs for their long Scythian hair. We've got jewellery. And we've got this vase depicting some Scythian dentistry. Say, ah. Ah! Fairly far to the east, they found the remains of one woman, remarkably well preserved in the cold of the Altai Mountains, who tragically died in her 20s or 30s some two and a half thousand years ago. She's often called the Siberian Ice Maiden, or the Altai Princess, and her kurgan was just filled with awesome treasures, including a little pouch filled with weed for her to smoke in the afterlife. In life, she might have used the drug to manage the pain of her possible breast cancer, but she's hardly unique amongst the steppe nomads in using cannabis. This is a bong, and a fancy one at that. This isn't one of those cheap and cheerful glass ones that you can get from the local off-license. Now this is a solid gold piece of smoking paraphernalia for the noble stoner. And on the side of it is this delightful scene of one guy having a good stab at this poor unfortunate here. The stony aroma of the Pontic Steppe was something that Herodotus picked up on, and he says of it, There is a plant growing in their country called cannabis. It grows wild, but is also cultivated, and the Thracians use it, as well as flax, for making clothes. The Scythians take cannabis seeds, crawl under the felt blankets, and throw the seeds onto the glowing stones. The seeds then emit dense smoke and fumes, much more than any vapour bath in Greece. The Scythians shriek with delight at the fumes. This is their equivalent of a bath, since they never wash their bodies with water. This makes the Scythians the first to adopt the modern stoner aesthetic of a colourfully dressed, long-haired, unwashed, and heavily tattooed maniac. Now, from the way Herodotus talks about it, it sounds like he's not really familiar with the drug or its effects, which suggests it might not have been that common in Greece, where he was from. There, they preferred to have massive drinking parties to numb the pain of existence instead. The Scythians, however, not being a settled people, but nomads who are always wandering around, don't really have time to get familiar with alcohol like the settled people, because, you know, for alcohol you need to plant crops and then spend ages fermenting them, and that usually requires you to stay still. Instead, it seems they preferred to inhale the smoke from a plant that grew naturally on the Great Steppe, and then continue to spend their days riding round, drinking from the skulls of their enemies, and using their skins to make decorations for their horses, which... cool. Which is perfect material for the stoner comedy that I've started writing. It's going to be called Skillies and Atanis, and it's going to be about this Scythian guy and this Persian guy, and they just smoke their way across the entire ancient Near East. It's going to be great. We're going to have all sorts of scenes. There's going to be one bit when they smoke all of the green in the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. So, you know, if you think it has potential, let me know what you think of this idea, and maybe we'll get a crowdfunding thing going. Um, that's kind of it. I don't really have, like, a lesson or moral here. There's no real conclusion either. I just kind of wanted to tell you about the Scythians. They're just pretty cool. Um, yeah. Also, I know I haven't uploaded in a while. Um, life's been hectic. Thank you for those of you that have been uh, patient in hanging around. Um, there will be more to come now that life's freeing up a little bit. Um, oh, I should also probably mention that I don't condone drug use. Or, um horse archery, or skinning your enemies to make decorations from their skin. None of those are endorsed by me or, or the channel. Um, probably worth pointing that out. Cheers!